What's going on guys? This is Ellis from Ledge Lord Bucktails. I'm here at the Saltwater Edge today to give you all a bucktail tying tutorial. Now if you're watching this video, there's already a pretty good chance you're somewhat of a bucktail aficionado yourself and you know just how amazingly effective yet brilliantly simple the bucktail is. Um, we hear all the time how versatile they are. You can fish them in back bay waters or the raging surf. You can fish them day or night. Um, they mimic pretty much every bait profile that exists as well. So for that reason, anything will eat this. Um, and there's a few reasons why you should consider tying your own as you become more proficient with them. And the main one being that tying your own bucktails is a very cost effective and low involvement way of tailoring your presentations to the spots that you're hitting the hardest. And at the end of the day, that translates to more fish caught, at least from my experience. Um, it's also just fun. It's a nice way to keep yourself from going crazy during the winter time. So if you're on the fence about tying your own, maybe this video will convince you to start. Um, so with that, let's take a look at the materials you'll need to start tying your own bucktails. So the first important tool you're gonna need to tie your own bucktails is some sort of vise. Um, it doesn't have to be a fancy rotary vise like I have here. You can certainly use um, a stationary bench top vise. Um, you can even use a handheld vise. That's actually how I started tying my own bucktails. Um, you'll need some scissors. I'd highly recommend something by Dr. Slick. They cut the hair really evenly and nicely. Nice low profile scissor. Um, Thread and bobbin, of course. Uh, for thread, I like to use the Danville 210 denier. It's a flat wax nylon. It's pretty sturdy thread. I can be pretty aggressive with it when I'm cinching down the hair, so I'm not losing the bulk of my bucktail after a few fish. Um, you also need a head cement of your choice. I have the Solares UV powered epoxy here. Um, if you go the UV powered epoxy route, you'll of course also need a UV flashlight. Um, and you'll also need a jig head. Um, painted, or, painted or unpainted, doesn't matter. Um, I think the most important thing is that you have a jig with a collar, like you see here. Um, you don't have to tie bucktails on collar jigs. I just think it lends itself better to beginners. It keeps things in place and you know doesn't result in a messy thread wrap. Um, of course, you'll need a hair of some sort, um, whether it's natural deer hair like I have here or synthetic is up to you. One additional material that you might want to consider for your bucktail is some feathers depending on the overall profile you're going for. So adding feathers is a great way of lengthening the overall profile if you're trying to mimic a certain bait that's in your area. They, the feathers also give the bucktail a nice additional action apart from just the wavering of the hair. Something to keep in mind, and I'll be using some feathers in today's demonstration. And last but not least, to give it your bucktail a little pizzazz, you can add some flash. All right, so for today's demonstration, we're actually gonna start with the feathers first, and we're going to be tying them directly to the hook shank so that they are situated under the hair. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lay down some thread, like so, and Cut off the tag end, cover that up. And now we're gonna take each feather and try to place it not dead on top or dead on bottom, but kind of offset to either side. And oh, I'll also note, um, pay attention to the side of the feather that you're laying down because this is gonna influence whether the feather flares out away from the hook shank or is cupped in towards the hook shank. I generally like to tie them kind of cupped in. Um, again, that's just a preference thing. Um, I don't think it adds any added functionality to it. Go ahead. Give that a few wraps. And then just go around and repeat the process. And then just keep adding thread until you can't see the stems, like so. And then finish it off with four to five half hitches, which you can, of course, do with a whip finishing tool. I just use my fingers, because I think it's easier. Five, and then pull tight. 
Then we'll go ahead with our epoxy and just give a little dab. Come on, that. And then I, I have a little paintbrush here. I like to spread it around with that. And then hit that with a little light. All right, feathers done. Now, we're gonna go ahead and move to the collar and do the same exact thing this time, just with our hair. Um, so go ahead and lay down some base thread and cut. Now one thing I'll mention is um, you wanna pay attention to the amount of thread that you're laying down at the base because that's going to influence how much the hair flares up against the lip of this collar. Um, if you want a overall like larger profile bucktail, um, I would say just don't add as much thread. And if you want something slimmer, um, you're gonna actually wanna add more thread because that will leave less of a lip for the hair to flare up against. I'm not gonna do anything fancy with this. I'm just gonna apply enough thread so I can barely see the paint. And start applying the hair. Again, I'm just gonna take little chunks or <laughs> pinches of hair, better term, and go around the jig and evenly disperse it as best as possible. And I also like to remove some of these smaller hairs um, just because they take up excess bulk. That then might give this an additional trim just because I pulled some of the hairs out. Go ahead, lay that down on top. It doesn't have to be super neat. You can always trim the excess that flares over the jig and give that a few loose wraps. Um, then you can kind of spread it out as you'd like and then cinch it down with a few tighter wraps and just go around the jig and repeat the process. All right, and last pinch of hair. And of course you can go around the jig again if you want to get a, a bulkier bucktail, if you're looking for something that's gonna you know, be better for a shallower environment. Um, but this is the general process. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and just finish this off with a bunch of tight wraps. Um, can go ahead and cut off the excess that we have here. And keep wrapping. Now at this point, you can go ahead and add in your lateral scale if you have it. And then cut that as long as you want it. Go around to the other side, same thing. Cut that there. And then wrap till you can't see the lateral scale. Little, come on, little hair. Same thing, finish it off with about four to five half inches. Take the epoxy again. And then brush that into those threads. give that a hit of the light. And then for the collar, I like to actually add an additional layer of epoxy, uh, just cause I think it looks nice. Um, but you don't, you can obviously stop here if you want to save material. But I'll go ahead like this with the tube itself. Come on. And just try to give this an even kind of as neat as possible layer. That 
covers the whole thread collar. And then I'm gonna give that a hit again. I'll hit it for like a second, just so I'm not overwhelming the epoxy and making it bubble. Let it sit and then go give it a, another hit of light. All right, let's take a look. So here's a look at our final product. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, be sure to consult Saltwater Edge for all of your bucktail tying needs. They have very knowledgeable staff, even more helpful than myself uh, to guide you to everything that you need. Um, and if you're in the market for some custom fancy bucktails, be sure to give me a follow at Ledgelord Bucktails on Instagram. Thanks and tight lines. <laughs>